Greetings, this is Harry Nick, and we are fast approaching the primary gift giving period of the year. It's called Star Wars Episode 8. Woo! Actually, yeah, <laughs> having those two things coincide makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> so, as it is the primary gift giving period of the year, let's actually talk about stuff. I like stuff. Do you like stuff, Justin? I, I like stuff. I like buying stuff and I like giving stuff. So we're actually going to talk about the X-Wing products available and sort of what's a good thing to buy into as a new player. Hmm. Obviously, new players are probably going to pick one of the three factions and say, hey, what are like just a few easy packs I can buy to get into the game? And today we're going to start off talking about the Imperial Faction. Because Because it is the best faction. Looking at it as a new player, what are some things we can look at buying out that is just like a a couple of packs here and there that basically gets you a strong foothold in the game. Now, before we start this, full disclosure. If you are a new player getting into the game and you love the look of a ship, just buy it. Don't let me telling you this say, your choice is bad or whatever. If you like the look of it, go for it. Uh, Everything is fun in its own way. Well, because what we're going to say for the Imperials, I did the uh, the exact opposite of. Yes, you just bought everything, pretty yeah. much. Which, again, is something that a lot of new players do. But look, not everyone's financial situation is the same. Yeah. Plenty of people just want to go, okay, I have 100 bucks to spend, what do I do? Nick, tell me. Mm. And I will. And the point of what I'm trying to talk about with these packs here is they're pretty efficient and have good value out of the pack. You get really competitive upgrades, or you get upgrades that just gel nicely with the ship it comes with. And that doesn't mean that they're necessarily the things you want to fly with. Again, if you want to fly other stuff, go right ahead. I'm not here to stop you. Uh, But, for example, um, when I see expansion packs that pretty much has a build which is either competitive or fun or gives the ship lots of different options, I say, hey... That's a great value pack that new players should look at. Yeah. Pure and simple. And that's what we're looking at today. So right out of the gate, let's look at the core sets. Because as an Imperial player, you're getting two ships out of either of these core sets. Yeah. And that's just awesome. Um, basically, the difference between these core sets is in the original one, you get the old TIE Fighter. Uh, TIE with no other abbreviations or anything. Twin Iron Engine Fighter, the basic TIE Fighter. Mm. And it's a great solid ship. Um, It's arguably the best 12 points in the game if you fly an Academy pilot. I personally prefer this generic pilot over the TIE uh, FO generics, simply because it's cheaper and you don't want to sink a whole lot of points on this. You can field more of these more effectively, more efficiently. And you also get the Black Squadron pilot as a two of in this pack as well. And if you want to look at building a crack swarm one day, this is the foundation of that. Definitely. Now, the Black Squadron pilot comes in every TIE Fighter pack. The great thing about the core set is you also get all the range rulers, you get a damage deck, da-da-da-da-da, you get Mm. all this really cool stuff. And from that point of view, the original core set's very effective. But if we look at the Force Awakens core set, is you get a bunch of the different generic TIE FO fighters, and they're okay. I still err on the side of the original TIE Fighter. But you do get this nice little pilot here, Omega Ace. And he is not the most meta, powerful TIEFO pilot you can get. However, he is good. He has really fun build-arounds. This is an example of just a basic pilot ability that's fun to try and build towards. It's great for new players to sink their teeth into and try and play around with different upgrade combos because you quickly learn, trying to build around Omega Ace, what it's like to get synergy in your builds. Yeah, Justin, you're a new player in the Imperial Faction. Have you tried Omega Ace yet? Uh, he was one of the first ones I ended up testing with. Did you manage to get that upgrade? Did you manage to get that pilot ability? Plucking? I did. That's nice. That's nice. The great thing about Omega Ace is if you just fly well, you can spend a target lock and focus in one turn. That is possible. Mm-hmm. But if you combo it with things like targeting synchronizer, uh, when the new Tire Silencer comes out, you'll have advanced optics and you can mm-hmm. retain focus tokens and target locks throughout the entire game he has build arounds but he is strong out of the box and this is what I'm talking about he's a great pilot to help you learn about synergy Mm. and I think he's a great pilot for new players for that Mm. reason and speaking of the TIFO buying the single pack expansion is also a strong option as well and that's the next thing I want to talk about Um, and why is that Justin? because of Omega Leader that's pretty much it he's just outrageous him 
and two upgrades which you get in the pack. It's 26 points that you're always happy with. Duke and Com Relay. And Duke and Com Relay only come in this pack as well. Yeah. I almost feel like FFG did this on purpose and just didn't realize how powerful this was going to be. Mm. A Mega Leader with Duke and Com Relay is just nuts. And even if you're a new player, um, it's great to have something which can be seriously competitive. You might start to move away from the more casual builds and move towards more competitive stuff. And this is just great. Yeah. Um, you get more copies of all the generic pilots if you want to fly more than two tire foes. If you want to fly three, you might buy this as your third one. Mm. And it's great to know that even if you have all that stuff, which is great in casual lists, you still have something that's really powerful later on that is just ultra competitive. And Omega Leader is frankly ultra competitive. Yeah. Um, for 26 points, this build is nuts. And you get it right out of the pack. And that is just great value. So... The two core sets and the TIFO fighter definitely get a massive tick from me in terms of just great stuff out of the pack and a great thing for new players to look at. Mm. Moving on, we have another one which isn't doing so well in the meta right now, but I think could have a bit of a resurgence and also is worth looking at because, again, we get great builds right out of the pack. And that is the Thai Aggressor. Right out of the pack... We get a whole plethora of interesting pilots. I think the only non-competitive pilot in this pack is the Onyx Squadron pilot, simply because yeah. it doesn't have an APT. But look, the generic Sinar Specialist is great. Double Edge is a bit of a fan favorite. I'm not such a fan of it myself, but it definitely has its build that people like to play with. Uh, Lieutenant Kestel is a great fun pilot. Mm. Not super meta, but still pretty interesting. But all in all, you get really good builds out of the pack. Um, you get unguided rockets if you want to give it a better primary. But the most significant thing we have here is Lightweight Frame and TLT. This is the only way Imperial players can get their hands on TLT. And it's also the only ship they can take it on the Imperial faction. Yep. It introduces Imperial players to turrets. And apart from this pack being good value in all in all because you have great upgrades with it, learning how to fly with turrets is important because you're going to have to learn how to fly against turrets. Mm. Um, this is a, a bane of the Imperial faction. Imperial players often bemoan about how turrets are just so powerful against them. And I completely understand, particularly twin laser turret. I've come up against this many a time, and I'm just like... You're not a fan? Th this is just good. It's just really good. I mean, that's what it boils down to. I mean, there are a lot of ships in the Imperial Faction that can take auto thrusters and that kind of stuff. Mm. But, like, your generic TIE Fighters, even to an extent TIE Defenders, really don't like TLTs. If you can learn to fly with it, you then get a better understanding of it, and that helps you learn how to fly against it. Mm. Uh, even if there isn't that many counter tactics to it, it's just great to have that in, up your sleeve. It's a great learning tool to fly with a TLT. Even though TLT Lightweight Frame Sinai Specialist might not be the most meta thing right now, having a go, uh, just flying it, even like just in a casual setting, will help you as a pilot well, learn. Well, not only that, that's 25 points. Yeah. You run four of them. Yeah. It's uh, and pretty like, legit. You don't need anything else. Buy four of these. But even if you want to just fly two of them and yeah. a 50-point ship or something yeah. like that, I don't know. There are options. You could fly three of them, drop lightweight frame off one of them, and do a megaliter. Ooh. You do stuff like that. There are weird build-arounds for this. Yeah. Um, but my point is you get something fresh and different out of the pack, and that's great. It's yeah. a great learning tool. It's a great thing to fly with for a new player, for sure. The one other single ship pack we want to talk about is the Upsilon class shuttle. It's actually the most expensive one we're talking about here. Retails for forty dollars US. Uh, I think it's about fifty, sixty bucks here in Australia, depending yeah. on where you go. But the Upsilon class shuttle is a great pack for new players because of the plethora of options you get out of it. For the longest time in the X-wing meta, um, when we're looking at Imperial shuttles, we were pretty much only looking at the Lambda class shuttle with Palp. Yeah. And while that's great, look. The Palp Shuttle's fantastic, don't get me wrong, but it's very, very um, two-dimensional. It very much just does this one thing. If you see someone with a Lambda-class shuttle, you're like, ah, he's playing Palp. That's pretty much it. The Lambda-class shuttle doesn't really have a great amount of other options, and I'd actually love to see a Lambda-class shuttle fix. Um, mm. I think we could do more with that old ship. But anyway, that's a discussion mm. for a different video. The Upsilon-class shuttle right now is doing a lot of really cool stuff, out of the pack, we get Kylo Ren, we get Hux, we get the yeah. Targeting Synchronizer, and we get a heap of other upgrades. Now, they're not super competitive, but these are upgrades that are fun. 
Um, they give you real interaction with your opponent's squad, yeah. real interaction with your own squad. Well, you can put them on your Omega leaders or things like that. Uh, yeah, other TIE FO fighters. We were talking about Omega Ace before. The targeting synchronizer on the Upsilon class shuttle is a great wingman for it because mm. it gives it its target locks. And that's just really, really powerful. Um, Hux is awesome. He's a great support. Uh, he's a great support crew option. And Kylo is awesome. Uh, now, uh, arguably, these guys can do better in different builds. Um, Kylo Ren, for example, is fantastic on rear Edmore Shenru, mm. but he's not terrible on the Upsilon class shuttle, not by a long shot. He's mm. still very potent as just a crew option on this ship. And the point I'm trying to make is previously shuttles were pretty two dimensional in the kind of builds they want to take. But now this gives you a whole different uh, slew of different avenues you can take this down and work into different build types. Yeah. And that's just really interesting. And at the end of the day, it itself is a competitive ship, has 12 hit points, four red dice. It's solid. Um, the dial's pretty good. A lot of people bemoan the fact that it has so much red on these hard turns. I think for a shuttle, this is fantastic. Yeah. It has the yeah. coordinate action. Yeah. That's really, really potent. Um, it's something that's being introduced into the Rebel faction as well with the Phantom 2. But ultimately, this is not going to be another Phantom 2. It's a different kind of build. Mm. Um, and Coordinate is potent. Again, it's just another strong option this ship has. And I really, really like the ship. Anyway, let's move on to some packs that are worth looking at. Now, obviously, we can look at epic packs. The Assault Carrier is a pretty um, well-costed thing if you want to look at epic yeah. But look, new players generally don't want to look at Epic, for example. Let's have a look it at the other packs. It is very expensive. That's the one. And we have two Ace packs. And I just want to give an honourable mention to the Imperial Aces. I don't think it's a great cost-effective way of getting into the game. But I've got to give it a shout-out because it has two really good things in it. It has Carnor Jax, mm. which is a nuts interceptor pilot. He's not soon to fell. But he is still really, really awesome. I will say, though, for newer players, this is not a very user-friendly ship. Um, no, it, it's also not... The pack itself isn't perfect. It doesn't give you the the build for Carnal Jacks, for yeah. sure. It comes with push limits, and that's the main reason I want to give this pack a shout-out. Yeah. Two copies of push limits. Oh, Imperial players want push limits so bad on so many different ships. But the main issue I have with this pack is the modifications you get. You get hull upgrade, shield upgrade, and targeting computer. But none of these cards appear in the most high tier build you put on the interceptor. No, you have stealth device and auto thrusters, thrusters. along with the Royal Guard title in order to allow two upgrades to be put on the interceptor. Yeah. Now, I will say, and I'm trying to. I'm trying to really hammer this point home. You don't have to fly the most high-tier things to have fun to no. play games, even casually. But I feel the problem with these upgrades is they are a bit of a trap. Because you put these on the Interceptor, it becomes... It's not its not pushing the defensive capabilities of the Interceptor. Well, like, it is a three-hull ship. Yeah, you I, don't want targeting computer on it. You just... It's a real trap mm-hmm. putting that on the Interceptor. Well, like, hull upgrade is worth, what, five points? Three points Three and points. four upgrades for the shield upgrade. Yeah. Um, and I see a lot of new players fly these, and I just think, you've given this ship no more... Uh, you've given it no more defense capabilities. One more point of health will not save you. It no. just won't. That big hit is still going to kill your ship either way, and that three or four points... Three or four points. No, no. Three or four points is not worth wasting on anything. Yeah. And I feel like you need to sink the points into making this ship more defensive. I know it's meta, it's boring, and I want to inspire as much creativity as possible. But when we're talking about the Titan Scepter, auto thrusters and stealth device is just doing so, so much work for five points. It's how the ship works, Pretty much. I I know, and I say this with trepidation because I know a lot of people really want to push this whole creative spin on the game it's like no no you shouldn't just fly the things that are meta and I completely agree Hmm. the problem is with this ship um, these upgrades are just so much more potent than any other option Hmm. and yeah the upgrades it comes with is problematic and that's what I'm trying to harken back to Um, I don't say that in order to say you can only fly these things I'm saying if you don't fly these things you will find yourself in a world of hurt and that's just the reality Hmm. I hope and this is the positive spin I'm trying to put on this, is up, uh, FFG give us better options for the TIE Interceptor. 
um, with the Royal Guard tie. I hope they give us something that works as efficiently as these two upgrades in the future. Hmm. Because if they do that, then it's going to mean that there's more avenues for this ship. And ultimately, the reason I don't think this pack is awesome is A, the best option for it isn't even available out of the pack. And B, it doesn't have a lot of different kind of cool builds. Hmm. You pretty much take this build overall. But... Let's move on to Imperial Veterans because this is something I would recommend for this new players. Good. Absolutely. Out of the pack, you get a whole heap of pilots, a whole heap of upgrades. Not everything is a slam dunk, home run, sport analogy, but, <laughs> but everything in the pack is usable and you get some really powerful stuff in the pack as well. Right off with the pilots, with the top armor, you get Tomax Bren. Now, Tomax Bren isn't punching up high in the meta right now, but he's awesome. He's a really mm. solid pilot. It means your APTs at discard get to be used over and over and over and over again. I, I burst one of these. It, it's, yeah. It's good. It's really good. It comes with crack shot, which is arguably the best option for that combo. Yeah. Um, which is just awesome. You get the Gamma Squadron pilots, um, generic pilot score 5 with an APT, which is becoming the go-to thing FFG do with their fixes. Pilot score 5 APT. Um, the Star Viper got it. Uh, oh. The TIE Defender and the TIE Bomber got it in their fix packs. Uh, yeah, that's a fair point. And it works. It yeah. works. Pilot score 5, as a generic, is a great sort of yardstick they aim for these days, and it works mm. great. There are some really painful 4 of builds I've seen with this. Um, for example, uh, Gamma Squadron Pilot with Deadeye, Cruise Missiles, and Extra Munitions, and Guidance Chips. 25 Ooh. points is a 4 of. And the Cruise Missiles is well at home with the top armor. I believe it is the best ship for Cruise Missiles. Yeah. Um, that build is disgusting. The Alpha Strike is just so powerful. And you get two of them in this pack. You only get one of the model. I grant you that. Mm. Um, but you are still on the way to going towards this nice build. With the Tide Defenders, we get Countess Riot. Whoa, this is a great pilot. This is seriously up there in terms of meta builds. Yeah. And it's not just that it's a meta ship that's great for experienced players, but it is so much fun for new players. I, I enjoyed flying with it. Yeah, that ability is fun. It's exciting. It's splashy. Um, new players can play around with it and just... You're not being rewarded for flying badly, but it almost like it can catch you. It's like, oh, oh, this is a bad situation. I can flip it around. Um, it gives you an extra option. Um, and you can do it badly. But that's a good thing as well, because yeah. new players have to learn how to fly these things. Indeed. Um, you also get two copies of the Glaze Squadron pilot, which is a great low-cost generic. costs 34 points. If you take the TIE X7 title, you can make it 32 points and then put Crackshot on it for 33 points. Flies a three of. I've mm. seen people talk about this before, and it's, again, just a great, solid, basic build. Mm. We look at the, um, the upgrade cards you get. TIE X7. Still amazingly competitive, uh, even after the FAQ. TIE-D, fantastic. Tractor Beam goes so well with TIE-D. It really does. If you get other cannons from other packs, sure, you can change this build. You go for an Ion Cannon, that kind of stuff. Mm. But the TIE-D, right out of the pack, is so good. You can chuck it on uh, Canis Ride. You can chuck it on Marrick Steel. But the TIE-X7 title works on both of those cards as well. Mm. There are so many options with this. Um... A lot of creative space and a lot of competitive options and fun options. That's the Definitely. main thing. Yeah. New players might not be looking for things that are necessarily competitive and hard to fly, but they definitely want things that are fun. Yeah. That's for sure. I know that when I started out with X-Wing, that's what I wanted to look for. I, I was really keen on the, the very splashy sounding effects that like, oh, if you do this, this happens, or you can flip the ship around and, yeah. and cool stuff happens, yeah. interaction and fun and all that kind of thing. Yeah. And this pack offers both. Mm. competitiveness and fun and I think you agree because you own both of this and Imperial Aces this I've probably ended up using more this pack uh, works as a good um, springboard if you want to buy a second defender and then you fly two defenders mm. if you want to buy a third defender yeah that's tricky because you only get two of each title but you might want to run like a two of title and a one of title you can mm. get the tools for the three defenders out of this box if you want yeah. And it only requires you to buy one of another ship or two of another ship. Um, it doesn't mean you have to buy this. You don't have to move into that creative space if you don't want to. The issue with some other packs is you buy one ship, but that ship only works if you buy this ship over here. You need, oh, I need auto thrusters. I need that pack over there. I need the Star Viper. I need push yeah. limits. I need to buy an A-Wing. And suddenly you're buying things you don't want to buy. Yep. And uh, this pack does not do that. And that's the problem I'm coming into right now. I sit there going... Oh, I need this card. 
This only comes in a... Exactly right. Yeah. Because um, we're talking about like things like the Inquisitor's tie. Unfortunately, you just really need auto thrusters to make the Inquisitor like really sort of awesome and high tier. Hmm. And honestly, um, even if we're not looking at meta lists, if we're looking for new casual lists, I still don't think there are great options for that modification slot, even if we look at different things. Mm. Stealth device, maybe. But again, stealth device is not available on a lot of Imperial ships. I think Mm. it's only on the Slave 1 pack. Yep. And I 100% do not recommend the Slave 1 pack for new players. It's just not that competitive, unfortunately. Mm. You get veteran instincts, you get the stealth device. Ultimately, Mm. I will say this, don't get into the trap of buying packs just for upgrade cards. I mean, ultimately, if you become a player that wants to go to major tournaments and seriously compete, yeah, unfortunately, you do have to. Or you have to look at um, third-party options, and I still don't recommend that. Um, I always recommend that you support your local gaming shop before you look at buying things aftermarket. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I will say, though, and this is a discussion for another video, there are some situations where buying a card aftermarket is the only reasonable option, but that's a whole other discussion, as I said. Mm. Uh, where where you can buy the packs that work with what you want to do. And these packs I'm talking about here give you great options out of the box. Definitely. And if you want to get started into the game of X-Wing with the Imperial Faction, take a look at these. But ultimately, don't just take my word for it. Have a look at what I'm talking about. Have a look at all the other packs. Again, if you want to fly the stuff that you just think looks like fun, if you think the Punisher looks like a ship that you want to fly, go ahead, give it mm. a turn. Um, I will say, though, it is in bad need of a fix right now, but it's still a fun ship. Um, I know people that fly the Punisher and just love it. And that's what everything boils down to. Um, I still want you guys to be critical when you think of the way that you look at buying new ships. But use what I'm talking about here as a springboard to go, okay, this is what Nick's talking about. This is basic things that we can get competitive and fun stuff out of the box. Mm. And it's a great place to start. If you disagree, fine. And also... If I missed anything, um, I did go through every Imperial pack and use this criteria to decide what to talk about in the video. We both had a quick chat about each ship. We, yeah. yeah. But if you disagree and you think there's a pack that I should have talked about, say so in the comments. I'll do a correction video later yeah. on or mention in a comment video something like that. And also, we're going to be doing a video on this for Scum and Rebel in the near future. So let me know what kind of packs you think from those two factions we should look at right out of the box. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, like the Facebook page, and I will catch you later. Bye.